In this video I'm going to be sharing tips and tricks for Duskers for new players. I'm going to keep this completely spoiler free. Note that Duskers doesn't actually have a specific end game but there is lore in the game and I'm not going to be touching on any of that. Also I wouldn't recommend reading up too much about this game if you haven't played it already because a lot of the fun comes from discovering how the universe works, discovering different upgrades and enemy types. So instead of going into all of that, I'm really just going to focus on the basics here and teach you what you need to know to get started and make sure that you have the basics down in terms of the survival in the game. So Duskers is a roguelike survival game and the first thing that you need to understand is that fuel plus drones equals life in this game. If you either run out of fuel or you run out of drones that will end your run and basically that's what you need to keep on surviving for more days. So when you are exploring Derelict what you need to make sure is that you prioritize getting fuel and you need to prioritize getting drones more so than scrap because scrap while useful isn't nearly as valuable as taking a drone that you could potentially salvage or sell for scrap, so you should always focus on fuel and drones first. Related to this, note that there are two different types of fuel in this game, so one is propulsion and the other is jump fuel. Propulsion fuel basically will run out at some point if you're in a given system, and the way to replenish that other than getting more propulsion fuel from derelicts is to simply jump to a different galaxy. So this is completely normal, it's part of the standard loop in this game. So if you did run out of propulsion, you simply jump to another galaxy. You can always jump back to the current galaxy if you want to explore more ships there as well. As I said, that is just part of the core loop in the game, but that also means that jump fuel in particular is quite important because every time you do a jump that is going to replenish your propulsion fuel which will then give you the opportunity to explore more derelicts. When you are exploring derelicts note that the first two rooms are almost always safe to explore. The game does actually tell you this in the help menu so the way this works is that usually the first room is going to be safe and usually there's going to be an open door with a room joining that that you can also safely explore. Now do note that it is possible for something to break into that room but it is quite rare for that to happen and the implication of this is that you don't necessarily need to use stealth or motion sensors when you are exploring these first rooms and sometimes time does matter so what I would recommend is just take the drone that you usually take to explore and directly go into the first room and the second room to quickly clear that out before you proceed with the way that you usually play the rest of the game. When you start exploring the rest of the ship, you obviously do that by controlling the drones directly, but most of what's done in this game is done through the console. And there are two very useful console commands that you should learn to use quite early on. So the first one is the end command, which will immediately make all of your drones go back to the initial room within your own ship's airlock. That is useful if things start going wrong, or just in general if you want to fin finish up a given derelict, and you want to make sure that you send all of your drones back. The second command that's quite useful is flag. So what this does is if you type in flag in a room number it will change the color of that room just to give you a visual indicator that there's something going on in that room. And the way to use that usually is if you want to trap a hostile within a certain room you can flag that room and that avoids you accidentally getting into that room at a later stage if you forgot that there could be something in there that's dangerous. So definitely do use that to help yourself out and keep track of where things are. When you do make decisions about which derelicts to fly to and board, of course you want to look at how far those are away from you, but also pay attention to the ship information panel. There's a lot of useful information here, and particularly, you should always have a look at the number of infestation types, because basically, the more infestation types, the more dangerous that ship is likely going to be, and that at least gives you an idea of how many different types of hostiles you potentially need to identify when you're on the ship. Combined with knowing how many types of infestation there is on the ship, it is important to know what type of infestation you're dealing with. In some cases this can be really useful and as I said I don't want to talk too much about the enemy types but I'll tell you one example just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So if you encounter for example a drone and you are using stealth, that basically means that the drone is not going to be able to see your drone that you're using to explore and that will allow you to safely explore the entire ship if the infestation is a drone and there's only one type of infestation. So there are a lot of situations like this where knowing what kind of infestation you're dealing with gives you an idea of how you should approach the ship or in some cases if you should try to get all of your drones out and move on because you don't have the right equipment to deal with the infestations that you're currently facing. 
Note that when you are exploring, you don't necessarily need to have the motion sensor to do that. The motion sensor is really helpful, but I'd argue that the stealth ability is even more helpful because that allows you to see what you're actually dealing with, even though there may be cases where that's still dangerous to do. So do note that it is possible, even without stealth or motion sensors, to explore and see what types of infestations you are dealing with. Although, of course, if you aren't using either of those, it is a lot more dangerous to do so. Speaking of abilities, there are a couple of abilities that are quite important to have. So I would say Gather is one of the most important ones because you won't be able to pick up fuel without it. You also need it to pick up scrap. Then there is the Tow ability, which is also incredibly useful to have because if you come across drones that can be used without just swapping out parts from it, you can actually tow that back to your ship and you can also tow back ship upgrades to your ship. And then finally, Either you need to have the generator ability or you need something that can be used to power generators. It's not essential to have this, but it's very difficult to play the game if you don't have the ability to power up sections of the ship and use that to open and close doors. Now opening and closing doors is of course useful because you need to get your drones into rooms, but it's also useful because you can go into sections of the ship where you don't currently have your drones, and if you are aware of an enemy that's in there, you can open the door and you can sort of herd it into different rooms, and one of the things that's going to allow you to do is to vent hostiles out of the airlocks. Now do be careful when you vent something out of the airlock because if there's anything else in the room that's loose and lying around, that will get vented as well which means you won't be able to salvage it. Also, you can, if you open the door for too long, let a lot of radiation into the room, which is also going to be problematic. And then, of course, finally, you don't want to open the airlock if any of your drones could be exposed to the outside as well, because it will get sucked out along with everything else. Now switching gears a bit, I want to talk about trading posts because I didn't actually make use of trading posts for a large part of my first playthrough in this game and when I initially discovered it I realized just how powerful trading posts are and it is powerful for a couple of reasons. So the first one is that it is a lot cheaper to buy a part from a trading post than it is to repair an existing damaged part that you have. It's around a third of the cost so it really makes a big difference. Related to that, if you sell anything at a trading post, it doesn't matter what condition it is. So if you have a broken part and there is a brand new one at a trading post, you can basically sell it for full price and get the brand new part and it's effectively going to cost you nothing. So trading posts are a great way to avoid having to repair basically parts that you're using, which can be incredibly expensive. But then of course it's also a great way to just get extra scrap by selling off broken systems that you're probably not going to be able to repair. So my final tip is a big one that I had to learn the hard way and basically the way that this game is structured is you have systems and then those are situated within galaxies which are situated within universes. And what happened to me on my first playthrough is that I arrived at a jump gate, I wanted to see how it worked so I jumped to the next universe only to realize that in the next universe there were no jump gates that allowed me to either jump back to the previous one or to jump to any other universes. Now I'm not sure how common this is in the game, but do be aware that that could potentially happen and what that effectively means is rather spend your time exploring as much as you can and getting as much out of a given universe before you jump to the next one just in case you get into that situation because if you do get into that position what it's going to mean is that you're going to start by salvaging all of the ships that have less infestations and eventually you're going to have to start salvaging ships that either don't have a lot of useful parts on board of them or that could have a lot of infestations and are just more dangerous to basically salvage. So do be aware of that and basically make that jump once you feel that you've done enough in a given universe to move on to the next one. That's everything from my side for this one. If you have played Duskers and you have some useful tips and tricks from your side, do let me know in the comments below. Also, if you haven't seen my other videos, I will link my review of Duskers in the description below and I'll also link my playlist for Duskers. So as always, if you do like this kind of content, do like and subscribe if you'd like to see more of this and I'll see you for the next video.